resounding criticism of Rutgers President Robert Barchi, who's getting paid to serve on the boards of two outside companies. And we're joined now by one of Dr. Barchi's leading critics, Senator Loretta Weinberg. We welcome you back to the program. Thank you, Mike. You have referred to this as a, a textbook case of conflict of interest. You've written to the board once. Yes. You've, you plan to write again, I understand. Yes, uh, I plan to write again. The letter is going out either today or Monday because we haven't gotten a reply to the first letter I sent. You know, according to published reports, uh, Bar uh, Dr. Barchi divulged that he had, uh, that he served on these two boards, that he's being paid something like $300,000 a year, combination of the two, plus some kind of stock options, and that he has $2.5 million worth of stock in one of the companies. And um, that's okay. He divulged to the board he was transparent. My question to the uh, Board of Governors at Rutgers University is, did you ask the other questions, what does he do for these boards? What kind of services does he supply? How many hours a week, a month, a year is he required to work? How many hours away from Rutgers? So is what, he what are they giving him and what do they possibly expect in return? Exactly. That is part has not been divulged. And there's been talk now that the, the relationship between these two companies and Rutgers may be uh, bigger, shall we say, than previously disclosed? Well, yes, because since UMDNJ, the University of Medicine and Dentistry, became part of Rutgers, those two companies do business with the medical school also, so it is millions of dollars worth of business that they, they are doing with Rutgers. They, the board has said, we knew about it in advance, we considered it, we decided anyway. If, if their response, if they don't respond, or if they respond in a way that you don't deem acceptable, what do you plan to do? Well, I don't have any direct control over the situation, but I certainly will continue to talk about it. I think the easiest thing to do would be for Dr. Barchi to um, resign from the boards. He's being paid something around $700,000 a year at Rutgers, along with a house, a car, a driver, all the other perks that a university president usually gets. So it seemed to me that this kind of added income is it's hard to get into somebody else's wallet, but certainly should not be done when you are the president of a really what's growing to be a larger university. It's been hired to oversee a tremendous uh, merger. And I don't even know how many hours he is required to spend with these companies. That's one of the unanswered questions. And I found it kind of amusing, according to one of the news reports, a spokesperson from Rutgers said, well, it's only the $300,000, only a small portion of the gross sales of these companies. What does that have to do with Everything anything? Everything is relative, yes. I presume. Listen, right. while I have you here, let me ask you this. You were a candidate for lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the current candidate for lieutenant governor, uh, Millie, Millie Silva, who was on this program yesterday? Uh, first of all, I know Millie. I think she's a terrific woman. I think she's a terrific candidate. You know what? She is not inexperienced. She has led a union that has someplace between seven and 8,000 members. She's uh, advocated in the healthcare field for increased Medicaid funding. She has dealt with multi-million dollar contracts. Uh, but, but, that she, but she's never held office at any level before. There were questions about whether or not she voted regularly as well. She certainly doesn't have the legislative experience that's, that you had when you came on to the ticket as well. Do you understand why some people might be skeptical of this choice? Well, I understand that in the partisan political uh, uh, environment that people are going to, people particularly on the other side, Republicans, but you know what? Governor Christie, when he became the U.S. attorney, had one failed term in Morris County as a freeholder, failed to win re-election as a freeholder. So we don't all come into this uh, environment with years of public experience. But I would say that Millie has the executive experience, the negotiating, the le which is the other part of the legislative experience. She uh, came from a, um, econo um, a lower economic background, worked her way through Barnard College got a degree. As I said, she's got all of the executive experience in heading a union, 
the uh, negotiating experience, which is like the legislative right. so, experience. So she's got a background there. Yeah. You also have been very, very uh, upfront about uh, a sense of outrage about the criticism that was launched against her by Mr. Arango, the head of the Hudson County Republican Party. You know, it, it never ceases to amaze me that in today's day and age, in the year 2013, in a state that had a woman governor at one point, that has a woman running for governor and another woman, two women running for lieutenant governor, that some man could be so inappropriate as to make comments like that poor thing and even demeaned his own secretary, as if somehow being a secretary is also a second-class citizen. Well, he, he said I he found, didn't mean it to be sexist. Well, he was he trying to talk qualifications. Well, he didn't mean it to be sexist, but, gee, isn't it interesting how many people took it that way? Maybe he didn't mean it, but then he's missing something in an antenna someplace about what he sounds like when he speaks like that. Senator, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you.